Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today it's another one of these talking at the camera videos because I occasionally like to talk about nerdy things. And I've remarked off late that the banana is the nerdiest fruit. And it's not because you can pretend to speak through it like a cell phone, like an old style phone. No, it's because, well, there's three reasons. And the first reason is it contains about 440 milligrams of potassium. And potassium about 120 parts per million is uh, potassium-40, which is pretty radioactive. It has a half-life of about a billion years, and uh, it decays via beta decay. Actually, potassium-40 is one of those rare beta sources which can decay via the three main decay modes. It can actually go through... It can emit an electron and become calcium-40. It can absorb an electron into a neutron, so that's electron capture, and it'll become argon-40. And occasionally, very, very rarely, it can actually un emit a positron and become argon-40 as well. And um, so, yeah, because of that, it is relatively radioactive. And, you know, pretty much it doesn't matter where it came from, you know, not that they grow bananas near Chernobyl, like... Uh, it's they're radioactive wherever they come from. It has been this way for billions of years. In fact, potassium-40, uh, argon-40 dating is pretty useful for measuring the age of very old rocks because of the half-life. Because, you know, when rocks form, they uh, can't have noble gases bind to them. So if you find any argon in it, then it has probably come from the radioactive decay of uh, potassium. So you measure how much potassium-40, how much uh, argon there is, and bingo, you know how old the rock is, more or less. So yeah, um, bananas, one of the more radioactive food sources. Anything high in potassium will be uh, relatively radioactive. But it's not going to kill you. You know, you'd, Even if you ate like 500 bananas... Um, you would probably die of other things. The The thing is, potassium is kept in homeostasis by the body because you want your body to have a specific ratio of water to potassium. So if you have too much potassium, you uh, get rid of it through your kidneys. And uh, so more or less, all that extra radiation goes straight out of your system. Now, the second reason why bananas are really cool for nerds is that um, well, you might notice that they are seedless. That's why they're so popular, because they don't have seeds, unlike those apples or oranges that you're forever sp spitting out the pits. Um, bananas are seedless because they have a triploid genome. That means that in, uh, in humans, we have a diploid genome. That means that for every, uh, for every uh, chromosome, we have a, a parallel chromosome. We have pairs of chromosomes. That's the important thing. And and uh, when, you know, when uh, we create new humans through a, you know, wonderful um, process, the chromosomes pair up and how those chromosomes pair up define who you are. Well, with bananas, they have three sets of chromosomes and they all have to come up in nice triplets. And that actually is very difficult to get right. Uh, typically, a banana tree won't produce uh, seeded fruit, uh, except for maybe one in 300. So it's pretty rare. And even then, like a third of those seeds uh, will not mature into a full plant. Essentially, every banana tree that is around the world right now, more or less, that's producing the common Cavendish banana, they're all clones of, well, Lord Cavendish's particular variety of uh, banana. They basically have to take cuttings and grow new ones off those cuttings. And that is a big problem because having exactly the same DNA in every single banana tree means that they are highly vulnerable to uh, a particular fungus, which is, you know, it's a scourge of the banana industry right now. And, you know, they're looking for new varieties which are resistant to this, fun uh, to this fungus. And in fact, this happened before. Back in the 1950s, there was a, a different variety of banana, which was, again, it was a triploid genome. Um, and it was wiped out, essentially, by fungus. They switched to a new kind. And right now, they reckon that it has about 10 to 15 years before we're going to replace the Cavendish with some other variety. Okay, third and kind of more uh, minor way is uh, in computer science or computer debugging, I have occasionally had encounters with something we would describe as a banana problem. That is a reference to, uh, well, how do you spell banana? B-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A-N-A. -N -A -N -A -N -A -N -A. uh, there's a joke about, uh, I know how to start spelling banana, but I don't know how to stop spelling banana. I believe it actually is attributed to uh, Terry Pratchett. But um, yeah, banana problem is a, an algorithm which has really good starting conditions, 
but perhaps can find itself getting stuck in an infinite loop due to poorly defined exit conditions. And I've seen real examples in the world of, uh, you know, of commercial software which has bugs which I would describe as a banana problem. Many people just call them infinite loops. But uh, infinite loops are slightly uh, less complicated. Banana problems is where you have actually quite complicated loop termination conditions. And uh, it's not immediately obvious that it will end up in an infinite loop, I guess. But yeah, bananas, nerdiest flute, fruit. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. Oh, yeah, I should also point out to all you pedants out there, because a banana has no seeds, it's not technically a fruit because fruits are actually, um, you know, sweet fleshy material around ovaries with seeds. Because they don't have seeds, they're not technically fruit. But then again, tomatoes are technically fruit and nobody calls them that. And it, you know, what is a fruit, right? Yeah. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.